How to find Jesus. Jesus is found in the temple. He begins uh, at the age of 12 to do the things he came to do, to go to his father's house, to invite us to his father's house as his family, and to be in that place of sacrifice. <coughs> Begin this Mass by asking mercy and forgiveness for all of our sins so that we can worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, you are sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, 
we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gave the martyr St. Thomas Becket the courage to give up his life for the sake of justice, grant through his intercession that renouncing our life for the sake of Christ in this world, we may find it in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. John. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Beloved, the way we may be sure that we know Jesus is to keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. This is the way we know that we are in union with him. Whoever claims to abide in him ought to walk, not ought to walk just as he walked. Beloved, I am writing no new commandment to you, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The commandment is the word that you have heard, and yet I do write a new commandment to you, which holds true in him and among you. For the darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light, yet hates his brother, is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother remains in the light, and there is nothing in him to cause a fall. Whoever hates his brother is in darkness. He walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples his wondrous deeds. The Lord has made the heavens and Splendor and majesty go before him. Praise and grandeur are in his sanctuary. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. A light of rest.
revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people Israel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. <clears throat> when the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate of the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My, <coughs> excuse me. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you prepared in the sight of every people a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. My sisters and brothers, this is the good news, the gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> As we continue our journey through the Christmas season, which began on Christmas Day, and will continue until we celebrate uh, Epiphany and then the baptism of Jesus on January 9th. <clears throat> so despite what our society says, the Christmas season did not begin in Advent. That's the Advent season. But as we continue our journey, we get little insights into the earliest time of the life of Jesus. I'm fascinated, and I hope you're fascinated, by the whole mystery of the Incarnation. Because if you stop and think about it, if you were God, if I was God, how would we decide to suddenly appear in fulfillment of the Father's promise? First given in the third chapter of the book of Genesis, when God addresses the serpent who has seduced Adam and Eve and injected sin into creation. I will put enmity between you and the woman. You will strike at his heel. He will strike at your head. From that moment on, God never forgot that promise and fulfilled it with the birth of Jesus. But if we were God, it would have been much easier to just appear as a fully grown adult, maybe in the Holy of Holies of the temple or something like that. But instead, God chose to become human. That's the mystery of the incarnation. Fully human, fully divine. I find myself wondering, I don't know if you ever think in these terms, did God ever wonder what's it like to be human? What's it like to walk on the earth that I've created, to, to breathe the air, to eat the food, to drink the water and wine? So God chose to come among us in a very simple, family-oriented way. And some of what we'll be hearing as we go through the Christmas season 
is very human. I thought the reading was going to be Jesus lost in the temple as 12 years in the future. But they're, they're very human stories. When I lived in Minnesota <clears throat> and was a religious education coordinator, there was a record that came out. This is before we had CDs and things like that. And it was put together by a musical group out of Minneapolis. And the title of the record was, He Lived the Good Life. And the whole record goes through all the various experiences of Jesus as he was growing up. Learning what it is to be human. His destiny being the cross. And today we have this very simple, very human moment in the new life of Jesus where he's presented to the Father. And if the Father never forgot the promise, what do you imagine would have been going through the Father's heart or mind as he witnesses his own son being presented to him in the temple as an offering, as a sacrifice? It's all part of the Father's plan. Because as the sacrifice being offered to the Father, ultimately, it's going to be the sacrifice of his own life paying for all the sins of the world and for your sins and for mine, becoming the blood sacrifice. It always makes me think of that line in the prophet Isaiah where he's talking, where God is talking about this vineyard that he uh, had, that he worked on, that he wanted to see good fruit coming from. And, and in that story, <clears throat> that account, it ends up with God lamenting. What more could I do for you than I have already done? But you still won't listen. You still won't follow me. That's my addition to the statement. What more could I have done for you? The mystery of the incarnation is God answering the same question. What more could I have done for you, my people? I know. I'll send my son. I'll allow my son to be the blood sacrifice in the temple. I'll allow my son to sacrifice his life that you might be free. Free from the uh, tyranny of sin. Free from the bondage of humanity, etc by his life, his death, and his resurrection. So today, as we continue thinking about these things, and I hope you're thinking about them, I'm thinking about them, <clears throat> as we continue doing that, we celebrate the feast of a saint from the 12th century, Thomas Becket from England. Was an advisor to King Henry II, I assume he was already a priest when he was an advisor. But then he became a bishop. And as a bishop, defended the church against the monarchy and sacrificed his life as a result. King Henry had him murdered. That's why he's a martyr today. Challenged by the times, challenged by the authorities, just like we're challenged in every age. But we have good news to share, that Emmanuel has come, that he is with us, he is in us. And we have the task, remember we're sent from the altar out there into the world to share the good news. We have the task of sharing the good news of saying to that world out there, we have good news to share. Help us to share it with you, whether they like it or not. So we're in the Christmas season. Uh, I still have my lights up. I hope you still have your lights up. It's not over yet. And we thank God. We thank God that he sent his son to us. To live for us, to die for us, to fill us with his love and his spirit. God bless you. <laughs>
Let us stand and offer our prayers. Let's pray for our Pope Francis, for our Bishop Myron, and for all church and political leaders that, um, especially in those places where there's persecution, that uh, Christians like St. Thomas Becket will be faithful in their sacrifices. We pray to the Lord. We pray for each one of us in this time of Advent, that we, time of Christmas, that we will be filled with great joy and peace and be able to bring the, the joy of the Incarnation to all of those around us. We pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray, in, especially for the special intention of this Mass, we pray for the repose of the soul of Manuel and Angelina Ponte and for all of our loved ones who have died. We pray to the Lord. Father, hear these prayers offered at the altar of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, you become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify our offerings by your blessing, O Lord, we pray. And by your grace, may we be set afire with that flame of your love through which St. Thomas Becket overcame every bodily torment through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through him the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth today in splendor, when our frailty is assumed by your word. Not only does the does human mortality receive unending honor, but by this wondrous union, we too are made eternal. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you with joy, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> to you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Myron, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. <clears throat> Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, 
whose faith and devotion are known to you. <clears throat> for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. <clears throat> we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Celebrating the most sacred day on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior of this world and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ, and all the saints. Therefore, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, <clears throat> which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O oh Lord. <coughs> Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, <coughs> We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us 
this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them. As once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. <clears throat> in humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, <clears throat> so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. <clears throat> to us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. We admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it in eternity, says the Lord.
Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made your blessed martyr, St. Thomas Becket, faithful in your service and victorious in suffering, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharistic celebration is ended, so let us go forth with love and joy to serve the Lord, one another, and all of those to whom he sends us today. Thanks be to God. Let's go out with number 528. <clears throat> Sing a merry 